Good morning. And happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. I cannot hear you. Happy Father's Day. Welcome to the service of worship on this beautiful summer Sunday morning. I'm glad you are here with us, whether this is your first time joining us or many times you have been with us to worship our God together. I pray each of us will find the God's warm welcoming and depth of God's love in and among us while we worship together. I want to extend a welcome, warm welcome to the folks who are joining online with us wherever you may be. You can find the bulletin and all the information you need on our website at headonfieldemc.org slash now. Let me highlight some of the announcements you can find on pages 8 through 10 in your bulletin. First, hospitality team training will be offered next Sunday, June 23rd at noon for two hours with light uh, lunch. Uh, if you are currently serving in the washering team or uh, check-in station team or property cafe team, or if you are interested in serving, newly serving in one of those teams, please join us, our hospitality team training next week. And you can find RSVP information on page 8 in your bulletin. Vacation Bible School is one of the biggest community outreach ministries in the life of the church during the summer season. And this year, we will offer Vacation Bible School from August 12th through 16th, Monday through Friday, 9 to 9 a.m. to noon. And currently, we have 150 children to register, and we need over 90 volunteers. And so far, we have 60 volunteers, which we are so grateful. But if you have a passion in children's ministry, or if you want to have a fun week with the children, please join our Vacation Bible School volunteer team. I, I cannot guarantee you that it's going to be restful or come, <laughs> but I can guarantee you it's going to be a fun week. So if you are interested in, please find more information on page 8 in our bulletin. And our youth group will go to a mission trip to give kids the world from July 10th through 14th to serve the Give Kids the World village. The village provides a magical vacation week to children and families who are dealing with life-altering illnesses in their lives, especially for children. So our youth will go and serve the family for five days. And our youth group set up the table of hope in an envelope to ask your help in the welcome center. And there will be a bunch of uh, envelope with amount uh, of donation that you would like to give. And please grab one of the envelope and bring it back with your donation next week or the following weeks. And it will help our youth uh, to reduce the cost of their mission trip, but have an uh, exciting and also meaningful uh, uh, mission trip. And so uh, I want to just highlight a point that online giving fund uh, is also available for youth mission trip uh, at headonfieldemc.org slash now. And also, if you have any youth or fifth graders in your life, you are in, they are invited to join our Mission Bleach uh, from June 24th to 28th, working with our various mission partners. This is an opportunity to serve the communities surrounding areas, and they will have an amazing week uh, with their friends by serving and participating in mission work. So you can find more information on page uh, in, in our bulletin, and Pastor Cricket uh, will be the contact person if you have anyone you want to refer to. Okay, the last but not least, Pastor Chris is traveling to Europe for his study of for two weeks, intensive study for two weeks and a one week vacation. So he's going to be back uh, three weeks later. So please keep him in your prayers for his safe trip and wisdom uh, as he study hard uh, for two weeks. And so if you are ready, I want to invite you to stand. 
and turn to page three to join our responsible work call to worship. Help us, God. Our world today is full of divisions and conflicts, pain and sorrow. Help us, Jesus. Our lives right now are beset with anxiety and uncertainty. Help us, Holy Spirit, we ourselves too often give in to doubt and fear. Light of the world, we give thanks to you for each other. Let your spirit of wisdom and revelation be with us as we come to know Jesus. Let us be like trees planted by the streams of living water, ready to receive your nourishment and deliver it to the people next to us. O oh, the Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Amen. I invite you to join in our opening hymn singing, 79, Holy God, we praise thy name. We will sing verses 1 through 4.
Good morning. It is a beautiful day that we have today. Let us thank God and rejoice. I'd like you all to just close your eyes. Take a deep breath in of God's breath. Let it out and open our hearts for prayer. Creator God, we gather in your presence today with hearts full of gratitude and love. On this Father's Day, we give thanks for the fathers and father figures who have nurtured us, guided us, and shown us glimpses of your divine love. We are grateful for their wisdom, their sacrifices, and their steadfast support. Yet, Lord, we also recognize that Father's Day can be a difficult time for many. We lift up those who have lost their fathers, those who have never known their fathers, and those whose relationships with their fathers are strained or broken. We pray for those who long to be fathers but face challenges, and for those who have experienced the pain of losing a child. Surround them with your comfort and peace, O oh God, and assure them of your unfailing love. We also remember the single fathers, stepfathers, and those who have taken on the role of father through adoption or fostering. Strengthen them with your grace and wisdom as they navigate the joys and challenges of fatherhood. Lord, we pray for the fathers who are separated from their families for various reasons, some of which are out of their control. May they find hope and healing in your presence. Help us to honor and support all fathers and father figures in our community. May we reflect your love and compassion in our actions and words, encouraging and uplifting one another in our shared journey of faith. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who called you Abba, Father, and who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we sing our next hymn.
morning. This is the good morning. This is the word of God for us today from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 15 through 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the Lord, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a, wis a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this, work, put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Adam and Sean. Yes. I want to get your attention and invite you to turn to page six uh, for our sermon note available for you to follow along. Is there anyone who is passionate on cooking? Yeah, I see some hands. Good. Not for me. <laughs> when, you're, when you're cooking, have you ever accidentally put salt instead of sugar? No? I'm, I'm alone. Okay. <laughs> Even though they taste completely different, they look so similar to me. And the size of the particles and the color are the same. One of the ways that I distinguish them is to hold it up to the light. And if it is shiny, there is sugar. Do you use this solution way? <laughs> is there anyone? I've never had anyone throughout the worship. <laughs> to distinguish salt and sugar like me. And yet, to be honest, it is not easy to distinguish between them without labels on the containers. As cooking is not my forte, as many of you know, I had all, almost zero experience in cooking before getting married. At the beginning of my marriage, while living with my parents-in-law in South Korea for two years, I was blessed to enjoy delicious home, homemade meals every day that my mother-in-law cooked, as she is excellent at cooking. And on the side note, my mom's cooking is a little interesting. And so <laughs> it was like eye-opening moment for me. Since I moved to New Jersey, she has always been my go-to person when I had any questions about food or when I needed a recipe. A couple of years ago, when I lived in my previous place, I tried to make jeukbokgum, one of Korean food, Korean spicy stir-fried pork for my guest with my mother-in-law's recipe. But somehow, the sauce that I made tasted so weird, and it was even getting worse when I added some sugar to try to fix it. I followed the recipe step by step and measured every ingredient as written, so it was supposed to be delicious, yet it tasted very interesting, to say the least. <laughs> I reread the recipe, but I didn't find anything that I did wrong or to miss. So, to, in order to give me the second chance, 
I decided to start over. But unfortunately, it turned out to stay the same. As I was getting to the end of my tether, my husband found some problem what I did. I put salt instead of sugar. I know it's a silly mistake, but I never imagined that I could have done, possibly done that until I could actually did. What did I learn from it? First, label all the containers in the kitchen. <laughs> Secondly, do not over trust or over rely on what you see with your naked eye. Be mindful that there is always more to something than the eye can see. While reading today's text, I was immediately drawn to the uncommon but beautiful phrase, the eyes of your heart enlightened, in Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. By the way, the word Ephesians refers to the people in Ephesus and is also one of the books in the New Testament, Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. Ephesus was one of the big Roman cities in Asia Manor, Paul briefly stopped by the city at the end of his second missionary journey, but he went back to the city to share about Jesus at the beginning of his third journey. By the way, if you want to follow along the Paul's three missionary journey, go and read the book of Acts. And he, about his preach, you can find his preaching and teaching about Jesus beyond the Galilee and Judea areas. In Ephesus, Paul preached to the Jews in the synagogue first, as he always did in the new city. But his message was not well received. In fact, it was strongly rejected. But it opened another opportunity for him to share the message of Jesus. He went out and had daily discussions with various people in the lecture hall of the city for two years. And he spread the word of God to non-Jews and made Jesus' name known throughout the region. When Paul wrote this letter to Ephesians, he was in prison, perhaps in Rome, at the end of his life. And it seems that his audience consisted mainly of non-Jewish Christians. Regardless of their physical distance, Paul's prayer for the readers begins by thanking God for them, for their faith in Jesus, and for their love for all God's people. As this letter focuses on unity in Christ throughout the chapters, there might be a division they struggle with in the community among believers. But their shared faith and love were enough reasons to give thanks to God, and He was deeply grateful for them. I want to be a more grateful person. Is there anyone who want to be a more grateful person? Yes, and I think everyone would like to be a grateful person, but have you ever experienced you just couldn't be, regardless of how desperately you wanted to have a sense of gratitude? What has hindered us from being grateful? Is it the unresolved anger or frustration? Is it our high expectations from others? Is it a sense of entitlement, expecting to be treated better than others? Or is it from your pain and sorrow, from lacking some things in our lives? For whatever reasons, when we struggle to nurture and have a sense of gratitude, Paul exemplifies that having someone to walk together in faith and love each other is enough reason to celebrate and give thanks to God. And he continued to pray that the spirit of wisdom and revelation be given to them with the eyes of their hearts enlightened. I confess that I tend to read, take the readings or words literally. And when I heard this phrase, I imagined to have a little eye or eyes on our hearts, like Iron Man. I'm not sure if it's an appropriate illustration or not, and I feel like having the infinite source of energy in our hearts. 
and our physical eyes allow us to see the world around us by capturing visible light and turning it into a form that our brain can create a sense of vision. Likewise, the eyes of our hearts let us capture the light, Jesus, and this light turns into faith in our everyday life through the work of the Holy Spirit and creates a sense of God's vision for us to see. While driving in a car another day, I thought enlightening might be like a moment to, to buckle up a seatbelt. Two pieces of the seatbelt are completely separated until we buckle them up. But when we click them together, it becomes one piece and provides a safety for us. When the eyes of our hearts are open, we are connected with God heart to heart. And we personally come to know Jesus and we are able to see the power of his name already at work in the world. Growing up in a Christian family in South Korea, the church was the center of my life. And I spent hours and hours at church every week. And I heard about Jesus thousands of times in worship and Sunday school and at home. But I don't, I don't think I knew Jesus personally. My grandmother and my parents were faithful Christians, and they often talk about God and got emotional with tears in their prayers when we have a home of worship. But I couldn't understand why they were teary. I desperately wanted to know why God loves me so much and wanted to feel it that people spoke about, but I couldn't feel it, and it was very painful. In my college years, I struggled and struggled with so many unanswered questions about God. Why should Jesus die on the cross for me? Why the cross? And why for me? Why did God choose only the Israelites, not others in the Hebrew Bible? Why do innocent people suffer in the world? Why is someone healed while others die from the same sickness? The answers that the people tried to give me made sense in my head. However, I was not so convinced in my heart. One day in my prayers, when I heard God's soft voice from deep in my heart, I love you, I first felt connected with God and clicked with God. And I still don't have all the answers to my questions, but so many why questions that I had does no longer so much matter to me. I began to make peace with not knowing everything in life and started to embrace the mystery of faith. I can only understand as much as I experience in life. I can only catch a glimpse of God as much as I experience of God. There's no way for me to know about God fully. But the good news is God doesn't expect us to comprehend everything or figure out everything or find solutions for everything in life. Rather, God calls us and leads us to love, love God and love others and be faithful on our journey. And that love is revealed through Jesus, who came to the world as one of us and spoke in human languages. That's why when we are shrunk by the mystery of death and the mystery of human suffering, we may find hope given to us in Jesus' name. When the eyes of our hearts are open, our so many what-if what if questions which increases the level of anxiety and worries in life, can be transformed into even-if statement, which help us be deeply grounded by the love of God and the hope of Jesus, no matter what we face in our daily life. The gospel is a story of transformation. Ironically, the cross has become a symbol of Christianity worldwide nowadays, yet it was a symbol of punishment, shame, and guilt for criminals in the Roman Empire. The tragedy known as the cross is transformed into glory and power through Jesus' death and resurrection. 
through the resurrected Christ, our God's overwhelming power is, is to be at work among God's children yesterday, today, and tomorrow. When we embrace this mystery of faith, the paradox of the cross, beyond our rationale, ironically, there is freedom, there is liberty. In Jesus' name, the weak find strength, the sick find healing, the lost to find the way. The cross is a reminder that God's work is not done yet, even when we feel hopeless and helpless, because Jesus chose to be on the cross with the dis disfranchised and the outcast. Jesus chose solidarity with the marginalized and the weak. He chose to be with us today. And I love what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 18. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So what transformation would happen when the eyes of our hearts are enlightened? We are able to seek unity with one another in Christ. We are able to see people as they are and embrace as they are, as a whole being, not partially, as a whole being as our brothers and sisters, no less or no more. We are able to stop seeing people as someone we can take advantage of or benefit from. Unity is different from uniformity. We can engage with people without any ulterior motives. We are genuinely curious and care for each other. This genuine curiosity and compassion cultivates a sense of unity in a community beyond our differences. Introverts and extroverts, liberals and conservatives, left or right, or Democrats or Republicans, all come together, find a place to belong and place to serve and grow in love together in a community of faith, the body of Christ. When the eyes of the heart open, we are able to see, redefine every relationship. God is no longer a judge waiting for us to make a mistake and to say, I told you so. But God is our good father, good mother, good friend, and good shepherd who weeps with us when we weep. Neighbors who are different from us, who don't agree with us, are no longer our enemies, but all God's beloved children, perfectly imperfect, and we learn from each other. On this Father's Day weekend, we thank God for the people who have taught us what God's love looks like and feels like and shaped us into who we are today. I have been blessed to have loving parents who live in South Korea, and I have precious memories with my father when I felt firstly connected with him heart to heart in my college years. So let me share my story with you. In my memory, my father was a strict person in my childhood who had no problem correcting us. And I don't remember if we ever said I love each other on a daily basis while growing up. He said curfews for me and my two sisters as soon as we entered the college. One day in my freshman year, I went to a party with my friends and forgot to check my cell phone or uh, the clock until midnight. At least that's my excuse. We were in the basement where the signal was weak. So when I opened my phone, I was terrified to see lots of missed phone calls from my dad because my curfew was about 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock at night. I was too afraid to call him back right away, so I ran, just ran, fast as possible, hoping that he was sleeping at home, forgetting about me. It was a beautiful, snowy, cold winter night. And when I found my dad waiting for me on the other side of the crosswalk, I was terrified. But when he found me, he looked so relieved, not mad or angry at me at all. He had been scared to death, worrying about me if I did something wrong with me. 
He didn't ask anything else because I was safe. I didn't know how long he waited for me, but his hand was freezing cold when he put my hands into his pocket. We just walked back home together without any word. Have I ever doubted if my dad loves me? Never again. That was a powerful moment when I experienced forgiveness and unconditional love, and it changed our relationships forever. And that night, I caught a glimpse of God's love, how good it is when we experience it. I know it's my turn. to share this love with others so that they can also experience God's love, expecting nothing in return, and also forgiveness without any preconditions. On this day, I thank God for each of you, for your faith in the Lord you share, for your love for all God's people, as I learn from you what faithful looks like week in and week out. And I pray that Jesus makes us know him personally with the eyes of our hearts enlightened and help us be focused and clear to see the hope, the hope that Jesus made available for us. Meanwhile, let's keep in our mind that what we see with our naked eyes is not everything. Perhaps there are much more things that we are not able to see or comprehend. But God is at work for you and for me. When we embrace the mystery of faith, we are able to see and experience the power of Jesus' name more and more. Let our love be genuine and let our love flow through in our words and actions as we seek unity in Christ in and beyond our community. Amen. There are so many things that we are grateful for, but sometimes it's hard to see it, whether it's because of anger or resentment. Maybe we're focusing too much on what we don't have instead of what we do have. So today, let us see through the eyes of our heart. Let us remember all of the blessings that we have, the creation around us, that gives us the air we breathe, and the water we drink, and the food that we eat, the blessing of community, of family, and friends, and the blessing to be a blessing to those in need. The ushers will come around now to collect your tithes and offerings, or you can give electronically through our app, by text, or online at haddonfieldumc.org slash give.
are reminded of your abundant blessings and the grace you pour out upon us each day. In the spirit of the Apostle Paul's prayer for the Ephesians, we ask that you open the eyes of our hearts. Grant us the wisdom and revelation to see the world as you see it, with eyes of compassion and hearts filled with love. Help us to understand the hope to which you have called us and the riches of your glorious inheritance among your holy people. We pray that through these gifts, your name will be glorified and your will be done. Amen. Please remain standing as you are able and join me in singing our closing hymn, Rejoice the Lord is King, found on page 715 in your hymnal. I want to invite you to turn to your neighbor to say, I thank God for you for your faith and love. Don't be shy. I thank God for you, your faith and love. I thank God for your faith and love. I thank God for each of you for your faith in Christ and love for all people. And I pray that the spirit of wisdom and revelation be given to you as we, as we come to know Jesus so that our, uh, the eyes of our hearts enlightened and we know what hope that Jesus made available for us and we experience the power of Jesus' name uh, in our daily life. The good news is you are not alone. Love of God is with you. The grace of Jesus Christ is with you. And the peace of the Holy Spirit is with you as we go and be the sign of love and hope and grace in the world which need the goodness each and every day. Amen. <laughs>